Welcome to the Landscape Photography Vlogcast. Join me, Mr. Ferto Ninja, and Mr. Paul Thompson Photography from YouTube. Every Sunday morning at 10am for everything photography related. And also look out for some special guests. Grab yourself a brew, beer, or something stronger, and let's get into this week's vlogcast. So, just um, for everyone out there listening and watching or wherever you are, just can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into photography and um, just give of a Of course, man, yeah. yeah. Um, so, my photography, I suppose, started with travelling. Um, if I hadn't travelled, I would never have got into photography. So, it's been like a, a, a weird journey for me in a way um, because I only got into photography about four, four or five years ago. And before that, I had pretty much no interest, like only in the sense of, you know, getting the old phone out and taking a few snaps like anyone does on holiday and stuff. Mm. Uh, Not saying there's anything wrong with that, but that was as much as I I delved into photography. Um, And then, yeah, I started traveling and I was doing that thing with the phone, getting it out, taking a few snaps. And yeah, I was traveling around Canada and that's where it sort of kicked off. Just it's Canada, like the landscapes are unreal. Um, Have to agree. (laughs) <laughs> and you've you've been there haven't you yeah. yeah um just incredible and i think those landscapes just naturally inspired me to then like you know want to upgrade from a phone to a dslr if you want to call it that and just yeah um fell in love with the landscapes in canada basically and then after that i went to new zealand and that's where i upgraded my camera again um and very much fell in love with it like and that's where i started my youtube channel and stuff like that as yeah. well um so it's always been very much the travel aspect yeah it's quite ironic because now i'm at home um i'm still like mad to travel still have the travel book and that but i absolutely just fall in love with the uk yeah. so it's kind of flip turned almost like it's all about the photography now and the adventures at home rather than having to go really far and stuff like that yeah yeah is that is that and like it, at the end i don't i didn't watch yeah. the whole of the last one yeah yeah i had i had to sort this out <laughs> <laughs> terrible fan well that's my watch time screwed isn't it <laughs> <laughs> people watch time like down you to 4%. <laughs> I've only getting 350 views man come on <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the watch time to be it now <laughs> uh, have you noticed have you the no- difference yeah have you noticed your views going down recently since the lockdown are you asking me that yeah uh, yeah massively man yeah yeah um, yeah it's been it's been quite tough to deal with, I think. Although, like obviously, like all of us, I try my best not to get too involved in the stats and the views and all that. But I just find myself looking and thinking, Jesus, what's going on? Um, but I think I'm at a point now where I I'm just accepted it. Like my people subscribe to my channel, like I'm sure they are to yours, like for certain reasons. Like they want to see me out and about, and unfortunately, I can't do that at the minute, so yeah. I can't control it. Um, yeah. It is what it is. Like it's not ideal, but no yeah definitely well, hence, why we're, hence why we're going down this road to be honest it's just which, which is mint yeah yeah which is brilliant it's just like yeah. initiative isn't it i love all this stuff that people are doing like it's class you have to don't you you have to sort of mix it up a little bit because yeah for sure you know we mix it up when we go out don't we every week so um yes yeah, that's, that's a good way of looking at it man yeah a lot of the time we're um we've got to use our initiative like on the spot when we're out anyway <laughs> so it. yeah yeah and it's good to like i think like everyone obviously watches us and it's hard to watch everyone everyone all together isn't it yeah every week of course consistently. yeah so these look these things that we're doing here like me and paul were doing and and getting people like you on just i think it gets it gives everyone a chance to know the vloggers that they watch and find out some new vloggers that they didn't possibly yeah and it's off. brilliant exactly yeah because there's a lot of people at home now i guess watching more youtube in a way um yeah. and they're probably glad for it like because yeah. you may never have clicked on, you know, my channel or somebody else that you've had on or something like that. And yeah, it's good. It's, it is such a positive thing. Like it is. Yeah. It's just, I have noticed the views gone down. I, I don't know. We've been talking this for a while now, haven't we Paul about yeah, we have. why that is maybe whether there's more people watching it maybe, but I think there's probably a lot more people who were on the fence about doing YouTube videos that now got the time to do yeah. it. And and there's a lot. It's so much more saturated. You know what I mean? So like the likes of us are getting swallowed a little bit more. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, I think it it's weird. No, like cause I think at first, um, I expected. I remember at first thinking like, "Ah, oh, this is a downer because all my workshops have been cancelled and stuff." Which at first was like, "Jesus, that's terrible." But then I, I, I vividly rem- vividly remember thinking, "Ah, like at least the YouTube views will go up because so many people are going to be at home." Yeah, that's what we so thought. So now, like, a month down the line, I'm like, "What's going on?" Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it is get it has been getting me down a little bit um, yeah. personally, but. Us yeah, I, I've just been trying, trying, yeah, just been trying my best, you know, not to let it get to me because at the end of the day, it's it's not a massive deal. No, no. I mean, even Adam, even Adam was saying the same thing yesterday. To be mm. honest. well, yesterday, yesterday <laughs> feels like well, yesterday. Yeah. It's like but, yesterday. It's a bit of a rush, wasn't it? Yeah, but um, yeah, he was saying the same thing. Even his his views are down. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting because I guess you look when you look at people like Adam or like Photo Tripper or anyone like that, you kind of like they seem to get a certain amount of views every week consistently, but then you don't yeah. think, oh, maybe they might, they like in, in moderation, they might get like 3000 views less, but then I wouldn't notice that no, yeah. because that's a lot of views to me. Whereas, uh, do you know what I mean? Like to me, it might only be like losing 300. Yeah. yeah so it's yeah. kind of weird. It's weird how YouTube yeah. works, isn't it? Like, yeah. But I, yeah. I felt the exact same thing as you. I thought, wow, mm. how would we turn this into positive? One, we get to do stuff like this. Um, and me and Paul finally get to do some stuff together because we're you know spaced out in the country. Um, yeah. We get to meet people like yourself and speak to Adam, and everyone seems everyone knows you guys, so it's gonna it's gonna help our views. Um, but it's, if anything, it's all everything, all the things I've just said, other than the views, is uh, I don't know. It's I wonder, weird. without like trying to delve too deep into it, I wonder if it's something to do with like the algorithm or maybe like something's changed since the lockdown and YouTube's focusing the attention elsewhere. I don't, well, I don't know. I, I was saying to you, wasn't I, that I think maybe ad revenue has something to do with it because people mm. aren't actually buying ads now. Maybe they're not pushing, oh, true, it, yeah. pushing it as hard as they would as if, if people were getting ads on it, if you've got a monetized video, you know what I mean? Cause to them, cause to them, that's all it's about is the ad revenue. It's not about anything else. Like, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's a good point. We're, actually, we're thinking it from our point of view, obviously. Uh, mm. But I suppose YouTube's bigger picture is it's all about it's all about that, and of that, course, and yeah. And although we not, don't really know the ins and outs of the algorithm, we do know at least like it's always mm. going to be geared towards like when you I think it was when you was in New Zealand, you was we were talking about you getting D seventy two hundred. Is that when you was in New Zealand? Getting what? Sorry, mate. You was on about? Did you message me? Did you message me about? about what did what the d7200 was like before you bought it you remember that or was that or was yeah that yeah yeah no no that's right sorry yeah i didn't understand what you were saying then. yeah yeah d7 it's that southern accent mate <laughs> yeah yeah it's d7200 <laughs> dan sad dan sad i won't bother doing it i won't bother doing it again <laughs> <laughs> i did see that one in the last video yeah that's <laughs> like my views are down it's because there's that accent yeah that's it man exactly yeah i was like why is he doing that he's from down south only people from up north do that about <laughs> southern... <laughs> maybe i should have imitated uh, imitated paul might, that might have got, uh, well, got more laughs like there you go maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I, remember, I do remember messaging you man because i had the d3100 and um, that was the first dslr and that's the one that i actually bought in canada when i was in vancouver uh absolutely loved it and then just because i bought that i just thought right what's the next sort of natural upgrade um, and that's when I, I watched your videos anyway. And I think Kim Grant at the time had yeah. that same camera. Yeah, she has, Does she yeah, still have it? Have. I think she might still have it. She, yeah, she might. I think, I think she's using a Z6 now. Oh, uh, yeah. I think she's got it as a loan or something. But yeah, as far as I know, she still uses it. But anyway, yeah, I, I messaged both of you. And um, yeah, amongst other, other things, it was like your opinions that swayed me into buying it. And yeah, I, I still have it now. Absolutely love it, yeah. wherever it is. <laughs> Was, oh, you've got one as well, haven't you? Yeah, I've still got mine, yeah. yeah that's yeah. why I upgraded to at the time, until I went to the dark side. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I went, we, I went really talk, we haven't really talked about camera gear yet, have we? No, really, we man. haven't. I mean, I, 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 I love my Nikon gear to bits. I mean, obviously, I've still got the 7200. I've still got all the lenses. Mm. Um, but it was a case of when I had the opportunity to go full frame, I thought to myself, well, if I was going to go Nikon full frame, I'm going to have to get rid of all my lenses anyhow. Yeah. Start again. So I thought, well, now's the time to to go somewhere else if I'm going to do it. 
And of course, yeah, like same difference, I guess. Yeah, yeah, because Nikon didn't have a mirrorless at that point, and I got right yeah. into it. I had a Sony A6000, which I used for vlogging and what have you. Yeah, and I fell in love with it. I just, I just yeah, the way it worked. So that's why I went and bought the uh, the other Sony. I think to be fair, what you just said there is actually something that gets overlooked quite a lot with gear. Um, how you just fall in love with a camera and yeah. you don't really know why. Like maybe just the ergonomics of it, whatever it is, you don't necessarily even need a reason. Yeah, yeah. You literally just have it in your hands and you're like, Jesus, this is like class to shoot. I don't really know why, but it's just something about it. Yeah. Yeah. You hear a lot of street photographers say that actually. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's a really big part of why people buy certain cameras. You hear a lot of people that shoot with Fuji like say that as well. Yeah, it's just you just get used to it, and it, everything seems to flow better with it. You, you yeah. can find everything better, and it just—I don't know. I don't know what it is. It just it just works for me. It either works for you or it doesn't, doesn't it? It's exactly really, yeah, and I think that's the bottom yeah. line of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the uh, with the Lumix, when I had that on loan, it just just felt really good. You really yeah. liked it, yeah. Yeah, I really liked yeah. it. Yeah, I just felt whether that whether whether because I'm used to. That sort of end, that sort of crop sensor. Well, it is it's it's not an entry level crop, is it? You know, there's two hundred is is up there. Yeah, isn't I, guess, it? I guess it's like intermediate, isn't it? By yeah. by what um, they brand it as, like. Yeah, but I suppose it's still a big jump from that to something like the Lumix or the, or the A7 in R range or what have you. Yeah, so yeah. that I, yeah. I, I was I was obviously had that in back of my mind as in back of my mind as well. But yeah, it just felt it just felt class. It was all metal, it was solid. Yeah, um, heavy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, really it's heavy. Funny, it's funny people are usually saying the opposite, man. <laughs> yeah. I love it because it's proper heavy, like. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. But yeah, it's just I don't know. It, I I felt like. No, I know what you mean. Like for proper, that build quality, just feels yeah. like really, really. Yeah. Just felt like I I meant business <laughs> before I even pushed the shutter. Which, oh, that's which, cool, man. Yeah. Which. Uh, I'm not normally like that. I'm not normally like um, Flash, you know, got to have the new gear all the time. But I tend to not spend any money for years. And then all of a sudden, uh, the floodgates get come down. Yeah. <laughs> and I just go mental. Uh, so uh, I can, like, Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I'm going to drop can five see. grand on it. <laughs> that's, that's what's going to happen. I can see it. It's, it's going to have to, yeah. Because, you know, let's be honest, you're spending... You're gonna you're gonna be up two and a half three, aren't you? Time you buy a body, even if you go second hand, you're gonna be up that high if you buy full frame lenses. Oh um, man, so, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So you, you want to? I want me personally. You, you does tend to not spend money through the year. I I want to make sure that I'm doing it right, you know. So but yeah, I agree. Yeah, no, I have a similar outlook, I suppose. Yeah, without realizing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I guess. Um, going back to the Nikon and stuff, um, I bought my Nikon D3100 in Vancouver, like I said, and I literally, like when I bought it, I didn't know anything about cameras. All I knew was that camera, did a bit of research and I knew that camera would shoot in manual mode. And that's all that mattered to me at the time because I really want to learn how to use a, a DSLR in, in uh, manual mode. Yeah. And that's why I bought the D7200, just because I bought a Nikon to start with. Mm. There was no real incentive to switch brands. Whereas now that I'm a bit deeper into photography, like I could understand why people would switch brands and stuff. Even the M50, man, it's class. And going back to what we were saying about just picking a camera up and like enjoying the way it feels, yeah, there's just something about it. More in a videography sense, but that's why I could relate with that so much and I could easily see myself using that or a similar sort of camera rather than the D7200 for sure. Maybe it's because it's mirrorless. I'm not sure. It could be, eh? Could be, because eh? yeah. I don't think it really mattered at the time. But once you use a mirrorless, you kind of see the advantages of it. I think. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that was another big thing for me with it, with the with the Lumix. It was mirrorless, obviously. Um, so that was another big jump for me. Like being able to see your exposure change live and. Oh man, what's going on there? That's like, oh, that's futuristic stuff to me. Even yeah. now, like voodoo yeah. dream to have a live Instagram. Like, I've, I mean, no, I've never no. had a live Instagram. I just love it. No, nor have I. Obviously, yeah, because it's in camera, but... Um, Sounds like such a trivial thing, like, well, just, yeah, it would be fun to have a live Instagram and helpful. Yeah, because, I don't know, obviously, you must go through the same process as me, is I, uh, I sort of try and work out what I want using the light meter, and course, then yeah. take a shot, 
and then I'll go from there. I look at the histogram that I get from the JPEG, and then then I'll make my adjustments from there, which is quite a long way around, really, in this day and age. It is, man. But like I or we, I suppose, I don't really know anything different. So it's not. Mm. It's not really like. I don't think I'd really notice the difference until I actually got a camera that had like a live histogram. Mm. All my video cameras have had live histograms, and that's um, helpful, I suppose, doing video work and that. But yeah, it'd be nice, but it's, it's definitely not like a deal break or anything at the minute. No, but no. It's just one of them things that when, it, you know, if, if a time comes where I have a little bit more money to spend on gear, I could say, oh, yeah, I'd like to have a live histogram. But at the minute, mm. it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a massive deal. Like. Is there any particular place that, you would like to go to now now that you've got this you know this experience where would you where would you love to go uh, and try and take advantage it's, of it's a good question man um it's like a classic question as well um it is, yeah <laughs> i love the uk like honestly <clears throat> although that doesn't really count as an answer i am like absolutely obsessed with this country um and there's a ridiculous amount of places that i haven't been to that I'm just so mad to go, like even down by you, like in the Southwest, anytime I've been to um, Cornwall or Devon or Dorset or anywhere down there, it's always been like family trips, um, which is fine, but you probably know how it is when you're just trying to fit in a little bit of photography around what you're actually there for. You yeah. can never really get stuck in. Um, so I'd like to go on a dedicated trip. Perhaps go down and meet you, man. That'd be class. Yeah, but definitely. Yeah, we'll have to organise that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then like South Wales and like Scotland, I've been to tons of times, but I don't even feel like I've scratched the surface. And mm, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, abroad, um, <laughs> Ireland, like I have a massive, I really want to go to Ireland, even though that's not like proper abroad. Yeah. Um, no, although yeah. like tell an Irish person that, I'm sure they'd say differently. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Tell the Irish boys we had on the other week that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. yeah um but uh yeah united states as well and i'd love to go back to canada and see it in like like you know bit, with a bit more experience and mm. um because in well there's no two ways about it that's where it all started like canada that's where the seed was planted so it'd be really cool to go back and um when me um it was me and my girlfriend that traveled across canada and we went proper like east to west like newfoundland all the way to bc like vancouver and it was just mind-blowing um, but yeah i'd love to go back and do it <clears throat> a little bit more photography minded for sure that would yeah. be class is there anywhere that you guys really want to travel to with your cameras like is there anywhere that interests you um for, for me uh i would love to get back up i would love to get up to scotland or and, and the lakes more uh, me and paul have talked about doing uh, workshops and that obviously before all this um covid things kicking about uh yeah. so i would love to do start some workshops and up with paul um and just shoot more up, up in the mountains really um although i'm living in wilkshire now which is sort of bristol way i'm only about an hour and a half from uh um brecon brecon beacons oh like across the bridge yeah i'm literally an hour and a half from from brecon now so that's close, man. That's good. Yeah, so I, I've obviously got all that coast there as well. That I can shoot. Um, yeah, so yeah, mega, yeah. I like I like to do stuff. I like to just ex explore the the new area that I'm in first, I think, and then um, and then we go up go up from there. Really, yeah. I'm enjoying enjoying shooting some woods and that now. No, but the woods nice. and that have not not been too good down in Cornwall. Where I'm from it's all planted pines two foot from each yeah. other so it's nice yeah. to go to some proper oak woodlands i've got a couple oh, yeah just local can't to be in, like yeah no i find it very hard um but i think i think the reward's worth the the hike <laughs> no that's yeah. true man it is like and it doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't crack on with it just because it's difficult if anything like that's such a good thing like challenging yeah. yourself you know <clears throat> and it is hard it's hard for most people i find woodland like nails but um I still really enjoy it. Like I really enjoy being there. It's something I want to do a lot more. Yeah. Do you have any more any local woodlands near you or? Um, so I live in Morecambe, like mm. quite near to Lancaster. Um, yeah, yeah. So a lot of the time I'm travelling up to the lakes. It's only like twenty minutes away. Yeah. To get to the southeast area, but yeah, there's a few like there's a there's an area um, of outstanding natural beauty called Silverdale and Armside. Which is actually like half of it's in Lancashire, but yeah, around there's quality for woodlands. Like, like you were saying, some proper oak, 
ancient yeah. woodlands and stuff like yeah. that. And um, yeah, where I am is a really good location for it. Not in like the super close vicinity, unfortunately. I'd love there to be a woods within walking distance from the gaff light, but yeah, um, yeah, there's some decent stuff like 15, 20 minutes drive, which I think in the UK is good going. Like, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely, yeah, definitely. What yeah. You then, Paul? You uh, I'd end? love to go back to uh, Vancouver, to be honest. Mm. More of those sort of where I started exploring those ancient woodlands. I'd like to go and and have a look at those. The old growth forests were absolutely stunning. Yeah, and um, I just found them really, really nice to shoot. As I was saying the other day, there because the the trees are so spaced out and they're so massive, and the ah uh, yeah, and the floor of the forests just covered in mosses, and it just it's just really nice to shoot. It's almost like quite tidied up naturally. Yeah, though. well, it is, it is. But it, I mean, it's it's like it's like you go to an ancient forest here. Ancient forests here have the same sort of thing. Everything's covered in moss because it's so exactly old. like it's, moss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, that's, that's a different problem. world. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just cleaner. It's a cleaner yeah. sort of area to shoot. And yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And I guess on the same sort of vein, some of the Oregon coast I'd like to go and visit. Oh, yeah. Mad for it. Absolutely yeah. mad for it. Nick Page and that is just making me like want to go there so bad. I've been there like again, like as a tourist. Yeah. Fortunately, it was before I was mad for photography and that, but Jesus, it looks like magical, like enchanted. And yeah, yeah. I'd love to spend a bit of time there for sure. Never been. I've never been, but it, it just looks sort of the same way as those those um ancient forests do in vancouver it's got that sort of feel about it it's absolutely man yeah wilderness i think that's it i think that's the key to it i just want more wilderness areas i I find that it's here it's beautiful absolutely stunning but i tend to be i tend to go towards the more the wilder areas and not so much the manicured sort of areas if you know what i mean Mm. yeah i know exactly what i mean yeah Um, it's naturally quieter as well you know not as many yeah. people about or even photographers and that yeah i think that's why Scot- scotland's appealing because it's wilder it's got a wilder yeah. feel wilder feel about it i love the lakes because they're only 40 minutes from where i live as well only half an hour yeah. 40 minutes but it's it's just got a completely different feel about it that scotland is just more wild and more rugged yeah i agree like i don't know if you guys know like rannoch more like yeah, yeah. around there yeah. oh man like it appeals to me so much especially in the winter just something about that bleakness and yeah. I don't know what what the the, the normal person, so like a non photographer, would probably just find a bit like boring and kind of yeah. thinking, Jesus, why do you want to spend your time there? But there's just something about it that I've never really been able to put uh, my finger on. I guess it is just the wilderness, like yeah, it's, especially in in the UK, it's few and far between. So I guess you appreciate it once you get it. Well, it does because we, we're used to kind of walls and fences and borders and you know exactly it, that's, yeah, that's sheep. <laughs> yeah, and that's the nice feel about it up there is it's just open. You know, it's just completely different. Okay. Um, you mentioned Kim earlier. Uh, do you oh, yeah. do you plan or on doing any sort of collaborations, like in person, or um, I, I I I have you done Sorry, any? Have you done any yet? Um, I've done. I've only ever collaborated with one person, a bloke called Ian Worth, who's like absolute quality. Yeah. Like he's, Ian, yeah. um, I think he's subscribe account not not as in not as if that's a way to determine how successful yeah. somebody is it's ridiculous but it just gives you an idea it's something like around ten thousand, and um I, th- I think he's based down in like northamptonshire um so but yeah he's a quality guy and i thoroughly enjoyed my collaboration with him um i think we collaborated the first time probably about two years ago and then we've done two or three since done a few wild camps together and stuff and that was absolute class. I loved it so much. And that was actually the first time I'd went out even with another photographer. Yeah. Um, I guess I've always been super introverted with my photography. And from day one, I've just never really enjoyed this idea of going out with other people. Yeah, yeah. But now that's slowly starting to change. Like, And I think there's a hell of a lot of value um, in going out with people that share the same interests. Like, of course it is. It's the same in any hobby. And like for anyone that's watching, like, absolutely, if, you, if you're introverted, just give it a try at least once and just see how you feel because I've had so much value from just going out with somebody else. Yeah. yeah. So chilled yeah. out. Like I I'd highly recommend it. Um, but yeah. to answer your question, like, yeah, I'd like to do a lot more going forward for sure. Is there anyone in, and not to put you on the spot, but is there anyone um, that you would sort of 
dream, like a dream collaboration. And you sort uh, of... I'm, I'm like a massive Thomas Heaton fan, man. I love Thomas Heaton stuff. Like, he's one of the main reasons why I got into like YouTube in it first. Um, I think he's from like Blackpool, not too far away. And yeah, like he, he's given me so much value and inspiration over the years. And even though he's like huge now, or you know, not huge, but like the biggest, I'm sure he'd, he'd have something to say about that. But you know what I mean? Like he's, <laughs> he's done well for himself basically. But yeah, I'd, lo- I'd love to like c- do a collaboration with Thomas. Not even necessarily that, just go out and shoot with him. Yeah. That'd be absolute yeah. quality. But yeah, apart from that, like I say, because I've been so quite like, introverted, I've not really thought about it that much. Um, I think we're all very like-minded and we'll probably all just get on and going out with the cameras, wouldn't we? Especially us that do vlogs and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny, isn't it? Like, um, Adam was saying the same thing. Um, other than, obviously, the Irish boys who are very much extrovert. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. The, um, Adam and, you know, like like Paul, I know Paul uh, tends to go out with, um, with people as well, but yeah. my, I know for my, myself, myself I, I'm very seldom... And I think that's quite a common theme, isn't it? Well, I mean, I absolutely. I love, I love going out by myself as well. Absolutely mm. love it. But I think, I don't know when I when I first started doing the vlogs. I I found it actually harder being by myself, weirdly enough. Because what well, when you were collaborating with somebody and vlogging, you mean? When no, when I was when I first started doing the vlogs. When yeah. I was by myself trying to do a vlog. I found that harder than actually being. Oh. That's mad. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have thought it would be the other way yeah, around. Yeah, well, me too. Because I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily an extrovert either. But it's just I, it's I found it difficult having a conversation with myself. I, I couldn't sort yeah. of yeah. When you put it like that, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't put the camera in front of me and kind of see the camera as somebody else. If you know what I mean, like everybody tells you to. It's I, mad in it. Yeah, I found it was so much easier to have somebody there to bounce off. That makes a lot of sense when you put it like that, man, yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's why it came down to it. Yeah, it is a very unnatural thing to do, just, you know, <laughs> chatting away to a piece of glass out in a field, like, <laughs> mental. Like, you definitely need to learn. There's a bit of practice in there, isn't there? Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, yes. I'm proper natural with it now. It doesn't bother me at all, even if people are around and stuff. But at first, geez, I, just, I just felt like an idiot. Like, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. yeah, I, I um, there's this. <laughs> it, I just laugh thinking about it. Actually, uh, there's this little um, uh, shot shot that I wanted to get, or I have got several times in down down in in Bude, it's on Bobbin Moor, and there's a fence that sort of bends around, and it leads to, into um, Routor, which is like, I think it's the second highest peak, well, hill in uh, in Cornwall. And um, I keep going back and back and back, and it's you have to sort of go through this little woods, and I always go the same route because yeah, I know I can get there in a certain amount of time, and it, you know what it's like when you're trying to do a video or whatever. I know what I have to do to get the vlog done. Yeah, and 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 I, if I'm in, and if I'm pushed for an idea or a time or whatever, I always go. I used to go to there. Anyway, so I never really explored the area. I just went to that same spot, and one morning I went there. It was so quiet. It was a little bit of mist on the water. All you could hear was the ducks, and I was, I was <laughs> rabbiting away. And uh, <laughs> as you do, as you do, yeah. And my voice must have travelled miles because you, you, it's obviously flat because of because of the the lake, and um, it's so peaceful and quiet. And then <laughs> I heard this rustle. I turned around, and there's a dirty great bird hide, and I'm a massive <laughs> bird hide with four blokes sat in it. Oh man! Watch, watching and listening to everything that I've just said, and I sort of went. It was that awkward silence where we looked at each other, and I was like, oh, "Fuck you now!" <laughs> yeah, I enjoy that. I like. just went like bright red and just turned yeah. my back round again, took my shot, and I fucked off. <laughs> <laughs> like, but that's oh, a good point, like because it, it like I don't mind when I know the people are there, but if I'm chatting away and I'm on a mountain or something. Someone comes up behind me, and I'm like, oh. it's like I've been caught doing something wrong. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> I turn the camera off, and I'm like, oh, sorry, you have to see that. Like, doing nothing wrong. I just feel stupid. Like, <laughs> that's uh, exactly how I felt. I felt like I got caught red handed doing something. Well, going back to the collaborations, um, you've done some with Chris Sale, is that right? Have you done like yeah. YouTube collaborations? Yeah, I've done is it three or four now, Chris. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy Chris's stuff as well. It's I, I like yeah. watching his journey. I think he's got like a little bit of a niche going on in what he's actually yeah, definitely, on his channel. Yeah. It's really cool. It's definitely, Chris is a very 
clever chap like but he's very business oriented he's very sort of corporate so he he has a plan a schedule and he and, and he's very organized and um i think that yeah his latest his latest sort of series like you said where he's do- documenting his journey it shows yeah, yeah. doesn't it um uh, i think this this has thrown him a little bit um but not like it throws it's thrown a lot of people i think chris would have Chris would have quickly found uh, a plan B that works. And, you know, he, his videos still, although they're different, they still feel organized, don't they? Yeah, um, for sure. But I love that, that like you say, he's, he's sort of business minded, say, but he finds a way to implement that into his videos. So mm-hmm. it's just another way of him sort of being himself and sticking yeah. to what he knows. And yeah, uh, so, yeah that's cool really, like that. Yeah, he's sticking to what he knows and he does it really well. Mm. And, and his, figures, his figures show that. Um, obviously, he's a fantastic photographer, and and obviously people like him as a personality, which obviously helps. But yeah, he puts himself in the right position, which helps. Yeah, but yeah, and um, we've done lots of workshops together as well. Um, uh, yeah, it's about four or five workshops now. We had lots planned. Class. We had, yeah, uh, of course, yeah. We had um, <laughs> one in one in May. We had to cancel. Um, one at the end of April. And then we had a two day, it was two full days, but spread over three yeah. down in, down in, down in Boss Castle where we had accommodation and we was going to do post-processing in a conference rooms. Yeah. So we've had to bomb all that off as well. It's a bit of a downer, um, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, I know I do enjoy working with Chris and I like collaborating like me and Paul obviously plan on doing things. I like doing stuff no. like this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this yeah, is kind definitely. of thrown as a curve ball, isn't it really? Just... Yeah. Same thing, really. Like, you know, you just you just got to take advantage of what you put in front of you. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, and, and we're just lucky that you know Paul's got some some great friends, and you know, and we and we obviously we're quite well connected in YouTube anyway. So we're all, although we don't know each other, we we do, don't we? So true. Yeah, it's weird. Like, yeah. Like, I feel like I know. Like using like a lot of people out there when I've never spoken to them in my life. Um, but in, in like, in a really good way, like, and like you say, when this sort of thing happens, it's great that we're all connecting. I'm actually finding that so inspiring, by the way, that everybody's just connecting and doing things like this and, yeah. you know, podcasts and live streams and Instagram lives. It's so good. And like I said earlier on, you know, people are just using their initiative and rather than just sitting down and thinking, Oh, isn't this terrible? Like we're just cracking on with it. And, it's cool. I think that's one thing that I've always, what's class about landscape photography is that in a way, if you think about it, we are all competitors, but like it, it's never felt like that from day one. Like no. everybody just feels like friends and like associates and like it's never really felt like a competition. It's not like in a normal business where people are doing the same thing you'd be competing against. Yeah. And that's such a good thing about landscape photography. Like, well, I think I think YouTube, especially, it kind of it pays you to to be open to collaborations and stuff like that as well. Definitely, absolutely. <clears throat> it open it opens so many doors. I think. Yeah, because yeah, know, I we've agree. All, we've all got our own individual. Although I dare say, people that watch my videos will watch yours, Henry and Paul's, because they're in that same more in the same genre. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I do think people are do tend to watch certain personalities that they like yeah and, and and when we all come together it does open people's minds and takes people off elsewhere i think yeah and that's why it works i think so but yeah it's uh, for sure it's a strange concept when you think that especially like yourself you are a full-time photographer now aren't you yeah um so no this is your living really well i dare say it's a small part of your income uh extreme but it, you know youtube more, specifically you mean yeah yeah so yeah right. yeah 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 no you're right yeah yeah so in in business terms that yeah it's a bit of a weird way to be a bit of a weird model really yeah on that what is your favorite light and subject light and subject um yeah. light although it's a bit vague i suppose but anything around sunrise there's something about that sunrise period that is just unbeatable for me yeah. Um, yeah, it just seems to have positive after positive going out with your camera at sunrise. And if you get a nice bit of light, um, obviously there's usually more of a chance of 
and fog or mist or whatever in, in, during sunrise. Uh, and then probably sort of side light. Right. You know, like if you imagine a woodland scene with a bit of side light and a bit of mist. Oh, yeah. God, it feels like the Holy Grail to me, like sunrise, fog and side light. Yeah. Um, absolutely unreal. Um, subject, I like water. Um, <laughs> me and I've too. always liked... <laughs> I'm addicted. Yeah. Uh, since since day one in Canada, I've just always been drawn to like lakesides or uh, being from like Cumbria as well, growing up around the Lake District. Obviously, it's yeah. natural that I was down by the lakes as a child and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah. I've always grown up by the coast. Um, so, yeah, I'm very drawn to any sort of water source, even if it's a stream or yeah, yeah. Like waterfalls, any cascades, um, foreground elements. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say even again, it's a bit vague, but that anything with water. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I gravitate to as well. Anything with water. Yeah, basically, I, I, I think there's something missing when I haven't got water in a scene. <laughs> in fact, even, yeah, prob- my, even my woodland sort of shots, I look for sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to find a lake in the middle of yeah. the woods. Like, what's going on? Man? What's going on? I need a stream. <laughs> 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 no, it's uh, it's quite um, versatile as well. Like um, shooting water, you go to the coast, and it's different every time you go as well. I'm yeah. sure you know that Tom, like shooting down yeah. in Cornwall, and that it's it's brilliant. And um, and then, yeah, mountains as well. Just can't go wrong. But that's yeah. more being there rather than just the photography, I suppose. Yeah. Did you? How I noticed obviously you've done a, a little s- series in on the Isle of Sky uh, for your um, YouTube. Lewis and Harris. Lewis and Harris, sorry, yeah. Oh, how yeah, did yeah. you uh how did you find going to something like that like on your own and did you have a plan or um so I plan pretty much the same for every shoot really, even if it's just something local and it's just like a bit of a loose plan. So I literally look so like Lewis and Harris, for example, I knew I was there for four days, so I just picked out like four locations and that was it. Um but then I don't mind straying off. I think a lot of photographers do that same sort of thing. Um, yeah. Personally, I just think it's the best way. Like it's it's a nice little middle point of kind of knowing what you're doing, so you're not just running around the shop and mm. not like getting too locked onto a plan. Uh, but yeah, that was unreal. Like my dad's from Scotland. I think I've mentioned that a few times on my videos. So I have a massive like heritage connection to being yeah. in Scotland, and there's just something about it when I'm there. Same as the lakes. Um, Lewis and Harris was another level though. Oh, like probably the best place I've ever been like with my camera it was just um but again like I'd hate for people to like hear me say that and then go there and be disappointed because I know I have such a huge connection to it mm. like, there's something beyond the photography that when I'm there it's just ah oh, it's class but um endless opportunities for photography like the yeah. island it's unreal like so I diverse. Lo- I did love that series, and I, the thing I liked about it the most, I think, was um, oh, oh, that's, that sounds wrong, but I obviously liked your images, but um, it was the it was the, it was the passion and it was the enthusiasm because you're you're quite enthusiastic in your videos anyway, but I, yeah. I, ne- I noticed you, re- you was really into it, um, yeah. So that was quite nice to see. No, it's true. I think like um, one of one of the sort of recurring comments that I get is that people really enjoy my enthusiasm which is just something that comes naturally like I'm quite excitable um have you, have you watched like Brendan Van Son yeah 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 Son yeah. Son, Son much um it's not like specifically landscapes but I always find he's got quite a similar he said it in one of his videos that his personality is quite excitable and he just embraces that and I find that's the, it's so easy to just say that to people like if anyone's watching they might think like oh maybe try and start a YouTube channel and do my own vlogs. Yeah. The best advice is just to try and be yourself on the camera. However, it's mm. so hard to execute. It's so easy to just say that to somebody. Um, but yeah, like that's just me being me, I suppose. And fortunately, people like me. Yeah. Running around like a lunatic or whatever. <laughs> well, I definitely, they definitely like you. You know, your, your channel, like you said, you've been doing it. How many years do you say you've been taking pictures for? I think like... Uh, t- photography probably about yeah. four and a half yeah and how about youtube um about two and a half but what i wasn't mean? consistent until only about a year ago 18 months yeah it's so you're obviously that, doing something right mate because what you, what sort of sub, sub count are you now um it's about 17 and a half 18 000, something yeah, like that yeah hell of an achievement mate well done no oh, cheers uh, yeah no it's, it is going well like for sure and uh yeah um I miss it. I proper miss it. Like, 
Yeah. It's weird. Um, when the lockdown, I know everyone's talking about the minute people are probably sick of hearing about it, but at the same time, I think, you know, it doesn't mean that you should always just ignore it. Like, but yeah, when it first got announced anyway, I wasn't really that bothered. Like I've said before, I'm quite introverted anyway, mm -hmm. outside of photography. You know, I don't, I, I, I just, I don't do a lot anyway. I don't go out and spend a lot of money and stuff. Um, but yeah, past probably five or six days, it's really hit me. Um, like struggling mentally a little bit as well. And mm -hmm. um, just, I guess I didn't realize how important the mountains and going out with my camera and stuff meant to me. And I, I guess, ironically, I probably never would have realized it if it wasn't for this lockdown. So that's become actually a massive positive. It's really good for like my mental health and just for myself as a person. Yeah. And like I wake, I don't know if you guys know Morkham very well, but you look across the promenade in Morkham Bay and you can see the lakes. So you see all the mountains. Yeah. I live like on the promenade. So I just, I wake up every morning. It's usually a blessing. So I'm like, oh yeah, like I love the lakes. It's my passion. It's, it's where I'm from. It means everything to me. But now it's like, look over the bed. Oh God, I can't go over there. Like, it's mental. <laughs> I never thought this would happen in my life. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a weird situation. That's for sure. Not good. Not is. Get out. That's the worst part, I think. Like, when would you? If somebody told me that like two months ago, like, oh Henry, you won't be able to go to the mountains in two months. Like, you just laugh at you. Like, oh, come on, like, yeah. it's going to be another yeah. war. Like, yeah. but I, I guess, I keep telling myself, you know, two things really, like everyone's going through something with it all going on and there's a lot there's people out there that have got it a hell of a lot worse so yeah, yeah. just try my best to stay grateful i suppose like it could be a hell of a lot worse yeah and you know when when we get all through this and I, it will be there um of course it, um, Every, mountains are still going to be there <laughs> yeah yeah it's just going to be uh like we said when we was talking with adam a little we talked a little bit about the environment and i was going to like, sort of recover in and it'd be interested to see how how it all is when we get back, how people react, how busy, what, busy the are. What do you think happen? Uh, I very much think people just go back to normal, <laughs> even though that's like super negative, but yeah, uh, I'd like to think not, but I think you're right. <laughs> wouldn't it be a class? Like if so. people, I mean, one thing I've definitely noticed for sure is that, um, people, it seems to me like people are starting to appreciate the smaller, simple things in life a little bit more, like just going out for a walk with the children or yeah. like here, just going out for a walk on the beach. Um, I don't know, just something tells me people, are, because they've had a lot taken away from them, they're like, oh, I'll go outdoors and go for a yeah. walk by myself with my earphones in, like, and yeah. hopefully that sort of thing continues. Yeah. That would be class. I suppose it's a classic thing if you don't know what you got until it's gone, do you? Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, I noticed that around here. We, I live in this quite sort of rolling sort of green hills, um, and it's all agricultural down in the valleys. And when when we've gone out for walks as a family, you can see you know, all these people like sort of spread out, walking around like ants around the outside of the fields. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's quite nice to see everyone out. Although, obviously, you know, we don't want everyone out congregating but in terms of that it's perfectly fine everyone's spread out and just enjoying their their little bit of space that they're allowed. exactly yeah they're only doing what they're, they're allowed to do at the minute yeah, anyway, they? But and, yeah and i've like, definitely noticed that yeah and like what you said earlier about you know mental health and i think it's so important i think people are realizing that like you just said how important it is just <laughs> yeah. to get out in the fresh air or you know the fact that people can't socialize they, they take it for granted that chatting to someone at the petrol station for five minutes they don't exactly take yeah it for granted, you know what i mean like yeah so yeah, yeah. like i think my like my missus for example is like the opposite way and she's quite social very social person she thrives off that and so she's struggling a bit because she can't do that yeah um so it's like one or the other almost but yeah like you say man the mountains are <laughs> all still going to be there yeah so yeah, just... uh, sorry mate that's all right carry on did you have any big plans trip for this year uh any big trips planned for this year then um, other than no, the one, you know. yeah I, I was very lucky with lewis and harris actually um i i remember coming back on the ferry and i think it was two days after that all them ferries got cancelled and that was just pure luck like I, i'd had that book for a couple of months yeah um but no, apart from that one, like didn't really have any trips. I would definitely have met up with Ian Worth, who I mentioned before again for some sort of wild camp in the summer. Um, nah, like I felt quite content, I suppose, in that I didn't really have anything 
Um, like, I, like I mentioned earlier, I just, I love the UK and I'm happy just, um, yeah, just like knocking about the UK. I've had a few trips planned down to Cornwall and places like that. Yeah. And definitely back up in Scotland. And until I feel a need to want to go on big trips and stuff, my passion really does lie here at the minute. Yeah. There's plenty of places to discover still here, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's just endless. Like, it's just like best country in the world for photography. Like, I'm so in love with it. It's amazing. So, mm. so beautiful and so, like, diverse, ridiculously diverse as well. Yeah, because if you, you know, if you, I know, like, we talked about earlier, so it, there is a lot of boundaries and fences, and you haven't got that sort of uh, remote feel, uh, um, more everywhere like you have in Canada and places like that. But um, there, there are them. There are places like that to find. You just have to yeah. sort of get off the I think the, a bit, don't the whole like remoting as well can be a lot of the time for myself at least. It can just be perspective as well. Like if I'm out in sort of like western in the Western Lakes, it's a hell of a lot quieter because it's a long. It takes a long time to get around there from the M6, or you know certain places in Scotland or just anywhere really. Like if I tell myself like yeah this this is like wilderness just lie to myself <laughs> um it, I, I tend to like just believe it but yeah i think you can really tell yourself like oh i'm in the lake district it's a tourist hotspot hot spot, but i'm always out in the lakes and i never ever see people like knocking about um like never i think that's mm. another benefit like about shooting at sunrise and stuff as well it's just it's just dead like there's no one out yeah no. and it's the start sunrise of the day yeah, yes. start of the day as well. It's, it's always a good time to shoot. I always exactly. It's positives, too many positives. Um, mm. One thing I'd like to ask about, uh, I've always just wanted to chat about other, uh, to other like um, YouTube vloggers or photographers or whatever, is the whole Kofi thing. Yeah. Um, mm. What are your guys' opinions on that? <laughs> <laughs> is it something you've ever spoken about already? Like, no. I just noticed there was, a, there was a bit of a controversy around it at one stage. Uh, yes, I, was, I was completely unaware of it. And then I sort of realised, oh God, I think there's, going on with there's it. no controversy around it if you're doing it and you don't broadcast it. <laughs> I think yeah, that, I think that's what what it is. I think people <laughs> get all up on the high horses if you if you're posting about it everywhere. And I don't get it. I don't understand no. it. We were talking about it with Adam the other day, weren't we? About the mm. fact that people just expect you to be doing everything for nothing and get. Oh know, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. It's just a strange sort of situation to be in. It's just... I don't... I, However, yeah. what I would say is that that is such a mental minority, minority of people. Like my subscribers, for example, that would be a huge percentage who would just like support me and they wouldn't care yeah, yeah. if I had sponsors. It's exactly. just a tiny, tiny percentage of people. And it's, it's the same with anything in life, though. Like It's easy to just say, oh, don't focus on you know those people, but they are that's knocking the, about, and it's worse that's online. That's the ones that you do focus on. That's the problem. Exactly. Unfortunately, that's just yeah. human nature. Yeah, I yeah. can have a hundred like, incredibly nice, supportive comments, and then I just get one person that um, you know, says something negative, and it, it, I'm like, oh, Jesus, like, why? I focus on that, and it's just, yeah, yeah. It, it gets me down, because I think all these people have made the effort to say something nice, and I'm focusing yeah. on this one, like... What human nature? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there's so many things I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I long long story short, I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, at the end of the day, um, you're it's a choice that people are making. Your subscribers are making. You're offering yeah, a yeah. service. You, we we are offering we're offering content to the world. Um, and some people are going to want to support you further than just watching your videos. That's that um, is that is a really important point. A lot of my subscribers, I speak about like on behalf of my own subscribers, they want to support what I do, yeah. but they don't want to spend a hundred quid, two hundred quid on a print. Yeah, but to yeah, give me like yeah. three quid to them means so much because they might have had so much value. And I know for a fact so many of my subscribers would back me up like saying that they're delighted yeah. to just send me three quid. Like that's exactly how I would look at it. I think the days of selling 150 limited prints for 200 quid each are gone. Um, I think we need to move on with modern things like, you know, look at crowdfunding for, for example, um, in charities, charities are really utilizing crowdfunding and people, you know what I mean? For raising money. And uh, I, I, if people want to do it, then, then let them do it. I don't, yeah, I don't see the big deal about it really. I don't see why people think feel like they need to. 
That's a good point, actually, about so, saying it's just more of a modern way of people supporting you. Yeah. I've never uh, really looked uh, at it like that. Yeah, yeah. I probably shouldn't have mentioned charity because I don't feel like it, it's not charity. But I was just oh, using. I, hate, that I hated when people. Why? Yeah. Why were people saying that? Like it's not like that. Oh, it's no. I don't. I shouldn't have mentioned charity. But I just. Um, yeah, you know, people want to support you in more than just watching the videos, and I don't see there's anything wrong with someone donating whatever they feel comfortable doing. At the end of the day, yeah. it's their choice. You're not taking advantage of them. Um, and it is the modern way, you know, you, everyone is, you, you, you know, firsthand, you know, you have to have multiple income streams and things are done slightly differently now and you've got to move with the time. So, um, I don't Do see you know what I don't get, right? If people don't want to donate, they don't have to. And like, yeah. that's it. The only thing I could understand is if somebody was putting it across in like a real arrogant way or they were just ask. I don't know, like they weren't asking in a, like a nice way. Yeah. And it's something like I, I'm really glad I've done it by the way, the coffee thing. But I pondered over it for like weeks and I was like asking my girlfriend, oh, I don't know if I should do this. Something doesn't feel right. And yeah. I started seeing a bit of negativity and I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. And I don't know. Hindsight's a wonderful, wonderful thing, but I'd have been so upset if I hadn't done it just because of a couple of people. Yeah. Like, you know, didn't like it. Like, they, you, they don't have to donate. Like, and no, I don't know. Yeah. Right. It, for some reason it is a controversial I think it's always going to be a controversial stuff like that um, but only because it's starting to hit the scene now I'm sure in five years it's new. Time, yeah, it's new everyone, everyone bet, will be yeah. Yeah, everyone will be doing it and it'll, be, and it'll just be integrated more than it is now um, but yeah that's how I feel I've got a Kofi page I don't advertise it but that's mainly because I'm lazy and I <laughs> and I haven't yeah. had, the, had the time to um, to really sort out where so, so my deal was like um if I, if I take money from my subscribers, I need to some way indirectly give them something back. So in my yeah. case, it was going to Lewis and Harris or yeah. paying for my exhibition, which they can come. Obviously, it's for me, first and foremost. Yeah. I'm not denying that, but they can get some value from it. like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that seems to work well. Actually, I've not had one piece of stick, personally, about my coffee no. page. Not one negative comment. I've just seen it elsewhere. Yeah. Well, I, yes. I've got one as well, and I've just, I have just leave the link in my uh, YouTube videos. And I've had a couple of people sending me money. It kind of blows me away every time because you think, Oh, man, really? yeah, it's mad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you're just so, you're so sort of grateful for it, that the fact that you've got people that actually want to support you. Yeah. That's so true, yeah. It's just awesome. That is, I think that's like, like a, good, a good point, yeah. But I think at the same time, I suppose you always need to remember that you are giving these people a lot of work. Even if you're just going out, you know, you are inspiring people a lot. So I think there's always good to have that element of just a little bit of self-worth as well and understand, yeah. you know what, like I have to realize I am giving people a lot of value. And I think if you want to, if you do want to actually make a little bit of money out of photography, um, that's something you've got to understand at some stage that you, you do have a little bit of worth to give to people. Yeah. Or else you just kind of like, oh, I don't deserve this money sort of thing. Like, yeah, that's it's a, a balance, point. I suppose, isn't it? It's is a good point. Yeah, you got a value in yourself, and exactly, yeah. And the reality is, we do. And I, I, I get lots of people say to me, oh, "Are you? But are you inspired me when you get up tomorrow morning?" Um, because you got up and you got a good picture. And, it's amazing. And, yeah. yeah, and and they're the sort of people that probably will donate or would want to donate to you in the future. Yeah. Um, and not everyone sends me comments like that, and they're probably the people that are not, but that's fine. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yes, yeah. So, should we finish on a quick yeah, fire? You've got two minutes. Two minutes. Oh. All right. Here we go. Now, I cocked the last question, the, the first question up last time, so I'm not going to do it this time. <laughs> black or white or color? Color. Black. Sorry, hang on. Black and white or color? Color. Uh, Nick on a cannon. Nikon. Landscape or portrait? Landscape. Light or composition? Composition. Filters or exposure blending? Exposure blending. Photoshop or Lightroom? Lightroom. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Um, I think you've already answered this question, but your local area or the rest of the world? Oh, local area. Every day of the week. Um, plan or spontaneous? Spontaneous, if you had to choose. Woodland or landscape? Landscape. Intimate or big vista? Big vista. 
idea. Big Vista. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on, mate. It's been a pleasure no, to have been, you on. Yeah, it's been mint. Um, thank you very much. It's been great yeah, to, like, I guess the first time I've properly, like, met you as well, virtually or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's weird because uh, when we was setting up this thing, it was like um, your name. Your name was one of the first people uh, we wanted to get on. So yeah, I'm really glad you got on. So yeah, thank yeah. you very much. No. Yeah, cheers for cheers that. Cheers, and uh, hopefully we'll sort out some collaboration in the future. Yeah, Superb. ideal. Sweet. We'll put your name down oh. in the links below there for anybody who wants to check it out.